welcome to Be Encouraged. Today I have with my wife, my co-pastor in our church, Hi, Joy. Jim. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. And, and we were talking Sunday in our church about something exciting. And that we'd like to talk about here called God is able. Amen. He God is, is able. There, there's a verse from Jeremiah 32. It doesn't say able in this, but it, it kind of sets the pace. It says this, uh, Jeremiah 32, 17. Ah, oh, Lord God. He goes, ah, oh, Lord God. Behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. There is nothing too hard for you. You know, there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. I can say a big amen to that. Nothing. Well, if you're sitting here today and you think there's something too hard for God, there's nothing too hard for Him. And there's a word that's used in the New Testament again and again. And we're gonna, if we have time, we'll go through many different places where it's used. And it uses the word able. That God is able to do something. The word able doesn't mean that he, just that he can do it. Like mm -hmm. I can say, I'm, you ask me for help, and I say, yeah, I'm able to do it. Well, will you? No, I don't want to do it. No, but God's not that way. Mm -hmm. The word, it comes from a Greek word, which means to, be, to have power, to have authority, to have, uh, actually, uh, it includes many things about the miraculous power of God. There's a word that, that we talk about uh, in Pentecost. You should mm -hmm. receive power. That word power came from this word, which means the miraculous power, strength, the might, ability, and all that God has. So, Joy, let's go through some of these verses okay. that says God's able, okay? The first one is this. He is able to save to the uttermost. What a word, uttermost. Mm -hmm. But here's the verse. Maybe you can read it for us. Uh, Hebrews 7.25. Yes, it's right here. Hebrews 7.25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He says he's able to save you. How did God save you? What does save you mean? Well, what, what God did is uh, he used somebody to share the gospel to me. You know, because I can, I believe I was a very good person. You know, I was not out there hurting people or killing somebody. But God uh, used another person to share to me the gospel. And then, and then uh, because what God wants is for me not just to have a good life, but to have an abundant and fulfilled life in Him. So He brought me to the knowledge of Him and to the knowledge of His purpose for my life. And then, and I start, you know, living my life, believing, believing He has a plan and He has a purpose for my life. That's great. And there's a verse here. It says you're saved to the uttermost. Yes. Uh, what, what does uttermost, what does that uttermost part mean? Well, if you look in the dictionary, which is, you know, we don't use it every day, the word uttermost, but the word in the dictionary would say to the extreme, to the farthest. Uh -huh. Well, when the Bible says uttermost in the Greek, it's an implication that he can save us continually. It's not only we come to him and give uh -huh. our hearts to him. Uh, uh, the Hebrew writer was, would say, I like to say Paul, but not sure Paul wrote it, but um, he was saying here that God, he's writing to Christians, and he's saying God is able to save you to the uttermost, not only to come into your life and, and, and change you, mm -hmm. but forever. Amen. That, we're, that we're always in God's hand. He can take care of us forever. Um, he is all, he's, and the reason He gives us He's able to save us to the uttermost, it says that we have an intercessor. Mm -hmm. Who's our intercessor? Jesus is our intercessor. Yes, yes, that's what He says. We have a high priest. And that high priest is Jesus. And be, in the Old Testament at times, and, and when the, old, the high priest would die, and a new high priest would come, mm -hmm. or his period of time was over, mm -hmm. actually, is what usually happened. But they eventually died. Aaron died. But Jesus never died again. And he's constantly there. He's saying, Father, Jim needs some extra forgiveness today. Uh, Joy needs lots of extra forgiveness today. He needs, needs a lot of help today. Yeah. That, you know, he's praying and, and, and putting his love. And... Um, He's waiting to save us, help us, not just spiritually, but practically. Mm -hmm. uh, I was reading a story about the citizens of Frederick, Austria. Now, I've been to Austria, but I don't remember being in Frederick. Uh, it's called Feldkirk. Feldkirk is the name of it. Okay, Feldkirk. Kirk usually means church, so it's, it's probably a place where there's a, uh, a center there. And, and uh, Napoleon was threatening this area, and the people were very afraid. And so 
uh, they began seeing Napoleon scouts in the mountains. And all the people were in fear. And the pastor there and the mayor, they said, well, it's Easter morning. There's nothing we can do. Let's just give it all to God, trust in Him, and just act like normal. And they rang the bells of Easter, and they all went to church instead of fearing. And Napoleon's army heard all these bells ringing, and they thought that they had received reinforcements, and they left. And the people rejoiced. They felt that God had saved them, mm -hmm. helped them, just because that they had relied on Him. Amen. God does that. Amen. And many times that, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, for me, this is sometimes true, you know, and I have the tendency, like, you, you try to solve the problem yourself, or you, I try to rely on my own um, ability or my own uh, wisdom or something like that, you know. But God, all, what God wants is really is for us to call upon Him and to rely upon Him because He is able much more than I'm able. His ways are higher than my ways and His thoughts are better than my thoughts. Well, the problem is even when we cry into God and God answers, we say, oh, well, that was going to happen anyway or something. When it really was God. Mm -hmm. That's right. An example. There was this guy in a roof, fixing the roof, and he started slipping and he falling over the edge. And he cried, oh, God, help me. And just as he got over the edge, his coat got caught on the nail. And he said, that's okay, God. I, helped me. I fixed it myself. Hmm. Well, you know. God put the nail there. Yeah, well, God allowed, you know, whatever <laughs> happened, I, I believe that God, God can help us, and we just naturally shrug it off. Our next verse is, said, and I love this, mm -hmm. and you could read this. Why don't you read uh, 2 Timothy 1.12? Oh, I love this. 2 Timothy 1.12, it says, For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Oh, what a verse. This is a song. I love this song. <laughs> yes, I remember. I know whom I have believed yes. in. That's oh, right. I, I love it. Now, it says, able to keep what I've committed. What have you committed to God, Joy? Well, when I give my life to Jesus, I, my, I, my faith is Him as my Savior and my Lord. And all through this life, I know that, you know, I have to keep the faith and believe the faith and keep the faith going and I, until that day when I meet Him, you know. And so God is able to keep my faith strong and remaining steadfast all through these years, all through my life, until that day when I meet Him. Well, you know, the Bible says God sealed you. Amen. You know, if you make a letter, in the, the kings, what they do is they, they, would, they would send a, a message. And to make sure it, it, that it was protected, they'd put the king's seal. Oof. Then nobody would dare touch it. They saw the king's seal. They knew that if they broke that, they'd get, probably get the head cut off. You know, you do not break the king's seal. Well, the Bible says that you're sealed. And I, you're sealed if you know Jesus. Good. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. I love he that. sealed it. And he's in our life. And I, I love this verse because it says, I know whom I believe in and persuaded he's able. God has the power to keep me for that commitment. I've committed to him until that day. So let's break this down. For I know whom. It didn't say I know what. Yes, that's right. I know whom. I, underline that. If you've got your Bible here and you're watching, underline the whom in, whom in green, red, purple, black. It's whom you believed in. I know whom. It, 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 it's not like what I believe, it's who I believe. Yes, right. Theology, theology is often what we believe. I know a lot of theologians that don't have a life in Christ. Uh, the Pharisees in Jesus' day, they had memorized the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. I mean, I don't know anybody's done that. Um, they, they, they knew all the doctrine. They knew what they believed, but they didn't know who to believe. Mm -hmm. They did not know whom to believe in. Jesus, the Son of God, was sitting right there. They didn't know who. And, and the problem is, is that if all we have is what we believe, not who, when we go through trials and troubles, when we are, are faced with the troubles of life, like Joy and I have been spending many hours in, 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 in a, um, a, hospice. a hospice, and you're there with people who, in different things, if you, just what you believe, it's not going to hold you during those times. It's whom you believed in. I know who I believed in, and then persuaded. I know whom, and because of that, I'm persuaded. Uh, see, a lot of people know about God, but they don't know Him. In fact, a lot of people think they know a lot about God, and, I, 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 and they know what's in the Bible. They think it's not even in the Bible. 
uh, it's like two politicians I was reading about, and they were kind of picking on each other and saying, you know, uh, uh, you don't know much about the Bible. The other one said, yes, I do. One says, I bet you $10 you can't recite the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. He says, yes, I can. Okay, do it. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And the other one goes, oh, oh, I never thought you'd get it right. Oh, wow. <laughs> he didn't even know the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. Well, some people, they know about God. Do you know God? Maybe you have your opinions. You've read theology. Do you know him personally? God wants to be known. And Paul says, I know whom I believed in, and I'm persuaded to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. What is that day? The day when he's coming back and he's going to judge all our works. Not judge us whether we're saved or not because we belong to him already, but yes. to judge us according to our works. You have two judgments. You have the judgment seat of Christ, mm -hmm. and you also have the great throne, the judgment, where God will separate the, the sheep from the goats, when God will separate those that have not acknowledged Jesus Christ as Lord, and those that have names are written in the book of life will have eternal life, and those names not written in the book of life will not have eternal life and be sentenced to an eternity in darkness and, and uh, in hell, in darkness. And, and, uh, but the judgment seat, what he's talking about is the judgment seat of Christ where Christians, when we die, we, one day we'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We're not going to be judged for our sins, but we're going to be judged for what we did with that light that he gave us. Uh, what did you do with the money that God put in your life? What did you do with the talents God put in your life? What did you do with the time that God gave you? What opportunities. Did you, you opportunities. Know? Yes, that God has given us, you know? Yeah. Yes. When Christians die, one of the, the, the comments that many people work with death have said, that usually there's not great um, worry and pain over past sins because there's an awareness that God has forgiven. But there is a, a, a sense often of regret over lost opportunity in life. That's why it's important that we mm -hmm. live for God every day. But back to our sack. God is able to keep us. Amen. He's able to keep me. He's able to keep me. I love that verse because I want to live for Him. I just don't want to live for Him part of my life and then, and then uh, turn my back on God and go away and, and end up in eternity, uh, not without God. But God is able to keep me. Jesus says, you know, that God's put us in His hand. And, and who can take us out of that hand? No one. It's no great, huh? And what I like, going back to you, what you said about whom, you know, for I know whom I have believed, you know. And if you have a, a, that personal relationship with Jesus, you know who, you know his character, you know his nature, you know that, uh, you know that he loves you unconditionally, you know that he's righteous, you know that he's dependable. You know, like when you have a good friend and you would say, oh, he'll show up, I know him. You know, oh, he'll make it on time. I know him because you have a, that personal relationship with this friend. And it is the same with God. You know, you, 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 your, your trust and your confidence is so strong and so real because you know God. You know him. You walk with him, you know. And every day you, you relate with him in every area of your life. That's right. Well, we get on our next verse, too. There's so much we could talk about there, whole meeting. The next thing God is able to do, oh, I love this. He's able to answer prayer. Ephesians uh, 3.20, honey. Ephesians 3.20. Now, it says here, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That's it, awesome. Awesome. It, I like it because it just doesn't say God's able to answer our prayer. Able meaning, remember able means he has the power, he's authority, the ability, he's yeah. what, he, he, he can. But it says, let's read that again. It says, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above, above. all that we not only ask, but we think. <laughs> wow. Wow. Isn't that, isn't that something? 
That's you know, awesome. The, the God is able. He has a power. You, you, we're sitting here with our puny prayers. I say puny prayers because we think they're big. But God, they're so easy, small. He can answer them. And we don't realize that God wants to answer. Mm -hmm. Not only does he want to answer, he wants to answer them exceedingly, abundantly, abundantly. above all that we can ever imagine. Wow. That's awesome. I love it. I love, David said it like this. Everybody knows the 23rd Psalm. But he said, my cup runneth over. I mean, God gives a cup to you or something. He just doesn't give you a cup. You say, God, can I have a cup of water? He says, sure, son. And that cup is just, boom, it's, just, it's so falling full. Over. It's just falling all over. You say, wow, that's more than I asked for. God ever done that, give me more than I asked for? Oh, yes, yes. Numerous times, you know, God has answered my prayers. And sometimes also he answers quite different from what I want, you know, and what I thought would be the best for me. Because God is all-knowing, but God has answered my prayers in many ways. He has supplied all my needs, provisions He has given, you know, directions. I've sought direction. He has given me wisdom and direction and uh, for things that I've sought for in my life. You know, and He has corrected me many times and rebuked me through His Word. I mean, God has answered healing. God has healed me. I mean, all kinds, all kinds of these uh, extraordinary things that God has answered my prayers. He, God hears prayer. And that's what's great. The Bible says sometimes when we don't get answers is because we've, we've not prayed according to His will. Mm -hmm. We've done it just for our own self, but God does it. Well, let's keep going because there's so much more here we can talk about. Uh, the next thing is that He came to fulfill promises. Romans 4.21. Romans 4.21 and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. You know, he's promised he's able to perform. Let's give an example. He promised to take care of us. I was reading about this lady called Miss Martin, and uh, she visited a friend, and that friend was, was, was sick, and the actually dying. And every time she visited this lady, this lady was so full of joy, and, and her eyes were glowing, even though her body was going through pain. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't understand why this lady could go through it. So finally, she said, i got to ask you a question. She says, why is it that you can have this optimism in the midst of your pain and, the, and facing death? And the lady forced herself up. It was hard to do it, and pointed out the window. There was a sparrow there. It said, if he can take care of that sparrow, I know he can take care of me. And Ms. This, this lady, Miss Martin, was so moved by this, she wrote this famous song that I'm sure most of you have known. And she wrote it, she says, Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and he watches over me. I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free. His eye song. is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. It's a beautiful song. Isn't that beautiful? That's a very beautiful song. I love it. Well, the next verse is he wants to establish us. Read um, Romans 16, 25. Romans 16, 25. Now to him that... Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. I like that. He's able to establish us. He's able, the word establish is to make stable. Mm -hmm. How many know that sometimes in our life we're not stable? I know a lot of people we call yo-yo Christians. That's right. One day they're up. Next day they're down. Yeah. We all do that, yes. but some people do that 25 times a day, yes. 25 or times maybe an hour. They, go, they do that for years. Yes, they go on and on. And God wants to bring a stability in your life. That doesn't mean you won't have times when you feel up and down. We all do. But it means that God will bring in more stability so the yo-yo doesn't go up and down as often. He brings peace. He brings joy. He brings life. And, and, I, and I just love that. It's fantastic. That's right. And, and I could talk here a half hour, but we got, we got our next verse. I, I want to spend more time on We just got short time left. And that's Jude. This is Jesus' little brother. We have no account that he was active in Jesus' ministry. When Jesus was alive, his brothers seemed to kind of uh, 
what's our Jesus doing? He's our big brother. What's he over there? Even they didn't have the same father, you know, because the father was God. But the Bible teaches, contrary to some people believe, some people believe that Mary uh, remained a virgin the rest of her life. The Bible does not say that. The Bible says that Joseph knew her later. The Bible talks about Jesus' brothers coming. And then Jesus said, who's my mother? Who's my brothers? But those who do the mm -hmm. kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, his younger brother was Judas. And after Jesus uh, rose, he obviously came in, to belief in God, and he wrote the last letter, really, in the Bible. We have uh, Revelation after, which is distinctly different than the other ones. But in this, uh, he has a benediction at the end, which I think is a benediction, is beautiful for the end of the New Testament. And then you have Revelation, I say, after that. And it says this, Now to him that is of power, to establish you according to my God. Oh, I read the wrong way. Jude 1. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Wow. To God who's able to keep you. I don't want to fall. We're prone to wander. We're prone mm -hmm. to make mistakes. God is able to, to keep, keep you, you from, from falling. falling. Keep you from falling. Isn't that great? That's good because, you know, we do. I mean, we're still, this carnal flesh, you know, and this carnal mind would lead us to many different ways and many different things which we think is good, acceptable, right. But it's even, even bigger because he says, look at this verse again. He says he's able to present us faultless. Faultless before the before presence. The pre How many know we got so many faults? Oh, yes. Speak for yourself. No, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, we do. But we do. We yeah. really do. You didn't have to say that so enthusiastically. Uh, yes, but we do have faults, you know. Yes. We really do, all of us. And what happens is, is that, that he is able to present us faultless. Why is he able to do that? Because of the blood of Jesus. Yes. Because of the blood of Jesus. Though we may, our sins may be red as scarlet, he can wipe it out like a slate giving us a clean slate and present us to God the Father blameless. Yes, that's like we had the verse before we read about it, the constant work of the cross. He is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of glory. Now, get this, with exceeding joy. Now, we stand before God. Some people stand for God, they're going to stand in fear. When they stand before the presence of God, they're going to they're gonna weep. The Bible says, you know, they're going to weep and there's be gnashing of teeth and regret. Mm -hmm. Yet the Bible says that we can stand before God with joy. Not just joy, exceeding joy. Exceeding joy. Hallelujah. Why is it exceeding joy? Because we're better than somebody else? Ain't no way. No way. Because we did better than everybody mm -hmm. else? No. Mm -mm. But because Jesus is able to do that, he's able to take you and cleanse you and present you before the Father with exceeding, you have exceeding joy. Isn't that amazing? You know, I think, you know, if I sit before God, I'm thinking, oh, he can see all the mistakes I did, all the things. Well, it's true. He knows what I did. But the Bible says he's chosen to forget it. The Bible says he's taken, let's say this is our sins. He's taken them and put them behind his back. Wow. Now, I put my notes here behind my back. I know they're there. Yes. But, but I've chosen not to see them. I mm -hmm. can't look at it. Mm -hmm. that, people say, how can God, who's all-knowing, just forget my sin? Well, the Bible says he's chosen to put it behind his back. And he has a big back. <laughs> We're like Corey Ted Boom. I used to love her. She said, she used to say it all the time. She said, God takes our sins and throws them in the sea of forgetfulness and puts up a big sign, no fishing allowed. <laughs> That's wonderful. I love it. That's wonderful. The thing we have to close here with is that someone can be able to do everything we talked about, but we can never benefit, we can never benefit from it unless we receive it. That's right. I can have a, a fancy car, mm -hmm. one of these uh, 1920, whatever you call them, that almost nobody can fix. I call all around Sarasota, Venice, I look for somebody who can fix it. I find one garage.
who's able to. Are you able to fix my 1920 uh, Ted Weiser car? And uh, they said, oh, okay, yes, we're the only ones who can fix a Ted Weiser. And so uh, Ted's our cameraman here, so we just named the car after him, and he's wise. So, And so what happens is, is that that man says, yes, I can fix it. Then Joy comes up to me and says, Jim, did you fix the car? I says, no, but I found someone that can fix it. A week later, did you fix the car? No, but I know someone that can fix it. A month later, did you fix it? No, but I know someone that can fix it. You know someone who can do everything we said. You have to receive it. We have to bring. You yeah. have to receive by faith. Yes. Reach out by faith. Amen. Um, Faith is very natural. Everyone uses faith. I mean, somebody said it like this, and it's true of us. My doctor, I can already pronounce her name and her name, uh, the one who put in my defibrillator, Dr. Shemalovsky. Shemalovsky. Uh, she's a very nice lady. But it, you, here, get this now. You said you go to a doctor whose name you can't pronounce. He gives you a prescription you can't read. You take it to a pharmacist that you've never met. He gives you a medication that you don't understand. And you take it without thinking twice about it, don't you? You trusted all those people. That's right. Well, have faith in God instead. He's greater than that. Have faith that God is able to deliver you, able to set you free, able to, to set you free from any bondage you have. He's able to set you free from any habits that are binding you. He's able to heal you. He's, he's able to do all that. And we want to unite our prayer with you that God will reach you, touch you where you are. Amen. Amen? Amen. Shall we pray that today, Joe? Yes. And if you're sitting out there today, yes. and you don't know Jesus, pray with us. If you need healing, you need encouragement, you just reach out right now. We'll believe God will touch you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come before you. Lord, you are able to save to the uttermost. You are able to keep us from falling. You're able to present us before God the Father, blameless and with great joy. Lord, what a God you are. I pray for every person watching. I pray you touch them, bless them, encourage them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have any Amen. need today and you want someone to pray with you, call the number on your screen. I know this program goes out in many countries, and so the number changes depending with the country, but the number that's on the bottom now is for you, where you are. You call that number, and somebody be there to pray with you and, and to bless you. Until we meet next week, we want to say to you, be encouraged. There's only one who can encourage you, really. That's the Lord, and He wants to do that. Be encouraged.